Good evening to everyone present here today. We have a product manager Jason D'Souza who will reveal how to spot the difference between value and growth stocks and ways to choose them according to the current market. Towards the end we would also be having a Q&A session. Over to you Jason. A very warm welcome to each and everyone gathered here for today's event. Over my past few years here at Market Smoochu, I have come across some set of investors who exhibit some preferences towards value investing and some investors who have some preference towards growth investing. But what exactly is this phenomenon? In today's webinar, I'll be taking you across that. And I think it's really important for us investors to understand these two styles of investing. So that any day tomorrow you invest in a PMS house or you invest in a particular mutual fund, you will be able to understand the fund manager's style of investing as well. So let's start off with this particular event, a disclaimer. Investment in securities is subject to market risk. Past performance should not be construed as a guarantee for future returns. So what will I cover today? I have broken down this particular webinar into three different parts. We'll start off by learning some concepts of what exactly is value versus growth investing. We'll then reflect. We'll then look at ourselves and see what are we biased towards or what strategy do we prefer when it comes to picking stocks. And lastly, some strategies to invest in value or growth strategies. Okay, so in the first part, very basic, what's growth versus value? How have these strategies performed over time? Is there any trend we can see? Some of the famous investors who have used these strategies, what are the kind of stocks they've invested in? And how do we define value here at Markets Mojo? Okay, the second part is what type of investor are you? What mix should your portfolio consist of? Okay, and understanding your preference when it comes to value versus growth investing. Lastly, when it, before we start off with thinking on how to invest, we look at the MSCI growth and value indices. Okay, these two are the most looked upon indices when it comes to investing in these style of stocks. Screeners to pick stocks and lastly, one of the top rated mutual fund in these categories. So let's start off with the first part, learning about value versus growth strategies. Okay, so let me break this down for you. On one part of the presentation, I have growth related factors and towards the second part, value related factors. The first, and I think one of the most important things when it comes to distinguishing between these two strategies, growth stocks or the growth strategy looks at companies which are trading at a premium in the market. So you'll have to understand that these stocks have high growth potential. The market does realize that and hence they could be trading at an expensive range. Whereas value, as the name suggests, looks at the price when it's attractive or cheap in the market. Okay, it looks at companies which are discounted to their actual intrinsic value. The second part, which is low or no dividend yields. So now let's example how does dividend yields play here when it comes to a business. Growth investors would sacrifice some of the short term gains or dividends so that the company can reinvest in projects which look better. Instead of the company taking its cash and distributing across its shareholders, these companies don't do that. They keep the reserves and the cash and they focus mostly on growth of the company, growth in terms of capital appreciation. So when we talk about growth stocks, they have low or no dividend yields. Whereas value looks at some income coming in. Okay, it generally has higher dividends and the dividends are more regular in nature. Okay, so these first two parts, I think kind of break down what exactly growth versus value is. But now let's go to the third part. Growth stocks are kind of more volatile in nature. Okay, these stocks have a high growth rate. So if there's any earnings miss, if one of the particularly quarterly results aren't that good as expected to be, these stocks can move downwards fast. So they are a bit more volatile, considered slightly more risky. I would not say slightly quite risky compared to their value counterparts, whereas value stocks are less volatile in nature. Okay, they move calmly in the market and they don't move in a very erratic manner. The last and the fourth point is that these companies in the growth part are smaller Okay, whereas in the value, you would find out larger companies, which are more established in nature. Now, as I spoke, speak about these four different points, you might already be start getting some companies or some particular businesses in your mind. You might be able to distinguish, okay, you know what, this, this stock I have in my portfolio is slightly tilted towards growth or slightly tilted towards high dividend, cheap valuations or value stocks. Okay, so if you get some kind of idea, let's move to this next particular slide. Let's try to understand how have these strategies performed over time. Is there any particular strategy which is clearly taking the lead? 
what have i done is i've gone to the msci growth index and the msci value index and i've plotted them over the last 14 yearly periods the one in the yellow is the value index the one in the red is the growth index now if you look at this particular chart okay for example in 2009 the value index moved up by 93% the growth index by 90% okay and now across the different yearly periods if you see there's not major difference between the outperformance of one sector or the other in any particular year okay apart from some years for example year there's a major difference okay year there's a major difference 14% difference okay but if you see mostly they are closely kind of tied there's not a very very difference except in some years the difference is turning out to be close to around 5% itself but one observation here is that out of the last 14 yearly trends the growth strategy has outperformed the value okay eight times in the last 14 years and if you see the growth strategy performed well mostly towards the 2009 up till 2017 or 18 i would say okay where you can see some substantial improvement so for example here the value index fell by 32% but the growth index only fell by minus 21% okay and over the last few years we can see the value index instead outperforming now as i show you this particular slide there's one thing we can actually understand is that no one particular strategy will take the lead for many years there can be times when one particular school of thought is actually performing well and the other performs well the next year okay now that we have some idea over this let's move to the next part in understand some of the famous investors who actually follow these strategies and what exactly is going on in their head for example when i talk about value investing it goes without saying mr warren buffett the chairperson of berkshire hathaway if you look at his approach when it comes to investing look at his stock selection he invests in this company coca cola who has it's a mature company with good dividend history and quite a fair valuation okay these companies are a bit mature stable in the industry and have a good record of regularly providing income to its investors his approach he himself admits that he avoids high growth technology companies if you look at his past investments you not find much trace of high growth technology companies and lastly this one quote he has made which is quite interesting when it comes to his value investing approach he says it's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price so when it comes to his school of thought with value investing he is not just looking at the price okay he is also looking if that particular company has good fundamentals if it's wonderful that's how he's called it out but if it has good quality and good fundamentals along with it okay so when we talk about warren buffett we're not going to straight off say that he's a value investor he only looks at price he also looks at fundamentals as well okay but this is a good example of an investor who follows the value way looks at how cheap or attractive the company is is it trading at a discount from its actual true value in the market let's move on to the growth investor the example over here some of you all must have heard about mr son he's a ceo at softbank and if you look at the kind of investments he's made for example he's invested in this stock paytm or the company oyo hotels which focuses on growth prospects and earnings okay these companies you might not find them stable when they trade in the market okay this valuation wouldn't be very stable growth but they focus on growth prospects and earnings which are kind of higher than their value counterparts okay his approach is he invests in riskier companies that could not yet be profitable but could turn around in nature okay for the likes of let's say zomato or tata motors they might not actually be profitable today but the growth is fast enough to turn around in the future so you can see his company is not you know promising that returns or the stability his investments could turn around in the future so there is some amount of risk on strategy over there there is some amount of riskiness when it comes to his approach and lastly he invests in companies which are mostly into private equity okay you might not find many of his investments into public equity but he prefers private equity investments okay so these are two investors if i don't know you all might actually you know relate to one particular investor more and the other one more but i'm i kind of think you're kind of learning these two strategies over here when you look at these two investors approach okay now before we go ahead and try to understand what strategy we like or what what preferences we have and how do we invest in value versus growth strategies i want to clear out one particular thing when we look at value or valuation in these kind of stocks i went to the internet and i took you know i started reading about how do we define value stocks i want to make a screen roll on value stocks how do we define them and if you see all across the internet they normally look at this pe ratio or let's say pb ratio 
But there is one problem when you look at the entire universe of stocks and you limit yourself to these one or two ratios. The problem here is that the drawback of PE ratio is it doesn't fit all stocks. You can't say that one size fits all. If you find a PE ratio of 40 expensive, that could be really different in the pharma industry or that 40 could be 80 in the IT industry and so forth. We can't stick to one particular PE or PEB ratio and then try to understand which stocks are attractively valued or which stocks are expensive and trading at a premium. How do we fix this actual thing? Okay, how do we not just put PE ratio or PB ratio in the screener and then try to find out which stocks are now attractively valued or which stocks are, you know, expensive in nature? How can we exactly go ahead with this? Here we have our valuation dot which solves this problem quite easily. And how does the valuation parameter when you look at value stocks, how does this solve it out? Okay, so when you understand valuation, the PE ratio here runs differently across industries and peer groups. So when you should look at valuation of a particular stock, you should keep in mind that if I'm looking at IT stocks, small cap IT stocks, then my PE average could be different for these set of companies. Okay, they might be trading at a very high range, but they, it demands that kind of premium in the market. So I can't just fix one number of PE, I should look at industry groups, peer groups across the market. And one other problem over here is when you just simply look at PE as on today, you're not keeping into mind the trend of the PE across the stocks. You're not keeping into mind how expensive the stocks were yesterday. Okay, and are they becoming cheaper today? You have to actually look at a trend when it comes to valuation. That is how the valuation dot over here is going to be quite useful when we look at the value strategy today. Okay, you can see it's not limited to just PE and PV ratio or stuff like that. It's looked at enterprise value on EBITDA, Okay, we also look at dividend yield, return on capital employed, so on and so forth, across different industries. So we won't stick to one, one size won't fit all. And also we're looking at a trend over here. Okay, so the valuation of a stock was very expensive before, is it turning cheaper today, all of that thing. Okay, so now that we kind of understand how should we look at valuation. Okay, let's move to the part two and now let's reflect with all this kind of learnings all the different distinguish I made over here today, the different kind of investors, let's reflect today and see, are we preferring one particular kind of strategy? And this particular part two is kind of important for you because if you want to invest tomorrow in either value or growth strategies, you need to actually understand what are you following over the past few years. Okay. So starting off these two people on the left and right, I'll be putting statements on the left and statements on the right. Okay, you need to keep in mind that which side are you tilting towards the left or the right one. When you look if a stock is a good buy, do you look at simply its current valuation? Or are you more focusing on its growth prospects? Are you looking at the earnings tomorrow? Where is your mind actually looking when it comes to a company? Do you welcome dividends in your portfolio? Or do you feel that if the company doesn't give dividends, it's fine? They can use that money of dividends, but I want better capital appreciation. I want higher growth in the stocks I hold. Where exactly do you fall over here? The third point is that do you kind of like volatility or do you want stable investments in the equity market? Or do you feel that risk is good if returns are good and I am game for it? Okay, so where exactly do you fall? And the fourth and the last point is let's wait. I think the prices can be available at better rates. Or are you a bit anxious and you say that, you know what, I have to run for this stock today. I can't wait for it to go up before the earnings call is out. If you find yourself mostly towards this side of the presentation, okay, then you're kind of looking at a value approach when it comes to investing in stocks. Okay, and the other side over here is mostly towards the growth approach. Okay, you might be having few points over here. So for example, if you look at growth prospects, that's great. But you might also want dividends. You feel that, okay, you know what, risk is fine, but you also want a better rate slightly later. Okay, there can be a mix as well, and we'll address that also. But you might find yourself slightly tilted towards the left or the right. Let's move on understanding your preference a bit better. Okay, this is the Morningstar style box. Okay, they've created this particular style box. It's a nine grid matrix. On one end of the matrix, we have large companies, mid companies and small companies. And on the other end, we're looking at a value strategy, a growth strategy. And remember, I said you might be in the between or you might be looking at a blended strategy. 
ओके एट द गाप स्ट्रैटेजी आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज दिस यू माइट बी लुकिंग एट स्टॉक्स विच कम इन द बिटवीन ऑफ वैल्यू स्टॉक्स और ग्रोथ स्टॉक्स लेट बी फ्लैश अ कंपनी ओवर फॉर एग्जाम्पल एच सी एल टेक द कंपनी कुड बी गोइंग गुड डिविडेंस द वैल्यूएशन टूडे इज एट अ चीपर रेंज इट्स अ लार्ज कैप कंपनी वेर एज लेट्स लुक एट अ फास्टर ग्रोथ बेस्ड कंपनी विच इज ट्राइंग टू मूव फास्टर इन नेचर विच इज बजाज फाइनेंस again a larger company but mostly focused towards growth if you are investing that particular stock you might be not actually hunting for dividends you might not want stability or actually looking for that company to grow fast on the market so that you can get higher capital appreciation and if you mix the board you might find companies which are you know growing fast companies also giving high dividends companies attractive in the market today and these are the blended stocks which come right in between of value versus growth Now I won't be filling each of these nine boxes, but I hope you're kind of understanding your preference here now. Are you kind of an investor who would go more with a slowly based HCL tech, you know, enjoy and go slowly and stabilize manner and enjoy the dividends, or do you want quicker returns in your portfolio and simply go to a stock like Bajaj Finance, which can be volatile, but move at quite a faster rate? Okay, so now moving on to this next particular thing. What should your portfolio consist of? is value the best strategy we can look at or is growth now should i just pick stocks as fast as bajaj finance let's break it down further no strategy has performed every single year in a straight line we've seen the graph at first okay there was a time when value strategy was performing and there could be a time when growth strategy is performing what people do usually see when the interest rates are kind of high the value strategy actually performs well and if the interest rates are low you could start seeing growth strategies perform well So across business cycles these things move okay and no strategy could performed every single year in a straight line but growth stocks be more volatile and value stocks provide some stability in your portfolio okay so is there a medium ground is there a middle ground the idea over here i'm trying to give you today when it comes to investment is have a good balance of both there can be times when you can have a slightly higher value approach there can be times when you have a slight preference towards only growth stocks but the key to successful investing what i feel is having a blended approach your portfolio should be ready for both a good bounce back or should be ready when the market is falling down it's a bit more stabilized in nature okay so as a value investor you could have some 20 to 30% of growth stocks as well or if you're a growth investor you could have some 10 to 20% of value stocks as well Okay, but mix it well. Don't simply go and you know stick to one particular approach. There might be years then you're stick you're sticking to one approach, and there might be a few years when you know that particular strategy is not performing. Okay, now we've kind of got an idea of where we stand today, and we also kind of got an idea of how value versus growth works. Let's now look into how we can invest in these stocks. How do we identify or bucket these stocks, or are there any mutual funds which have this kind of approach? part 3 and the final part over here today before we go ahead straight to the investing i spoke about the msci india value index and the msci india growth index what exactly are these what do their stocks consist of how is their portfolio composition so if you see the msci value index i've looked at the top 5 holdings over here and i've also put the score on markets mojo so that you get some idea how these stocks rank so we had infosys in the value index alliance industries hdfc lnt hcl tech Okay, and you can look at the score towards the right side. Only one stock is sell; the rest are buy or hold. And now the portfolio composition. Now you might reach this particular slide and look at the sector breakup over here, and you might get confused over here that why are IT stocks currently highly allocated into the value index? We did mention that IT stocks, or you know, stocks which are kind of more volatile in nature, might not be in the value strategy. But if you see the prices of IT stocks right now, it can be considered cheaper or attractively valued, so it might move into this particular index. So what you read on theory, or what you simply read on the internet, might not actually be the final call for that particular strategy. Okay, things do move; these indices do rebalance themselves, and then try to pick up you know stocks or or allocate to some some sectors which are following the trend as of today. Let's look at the growth index. If you look at the top five holdings over here. ICICI Bank, TCS Reliance, Bajaj Finance, Axis Bank. Okay, three of them are buy rated. And once again, the portfolio breakup over here. If you see, financials is kind of highly allocated. NBFCs or banks, thirty-two percent of the portfolio. 
followed by IT, consumer staples, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the growth index and that was the value index. Okay, if I take you over here across the side, we can also find these particular indices over here. Okay, so as I said, MSCI India value index fund. Okay, now if you look at this particular fund, this was the annual performance year on year. Okay, you can also see how it has grown. I would suggest you all to actually go on the internet later and you, know, you can download these fact sheets to kind of get an idea of which strategy is performing during which market phase. Okay, this is also where you can get the top 10 constituents, so on and so forth. Now, this is quite interesting what I found out over here towards the middle of the fact sheet. Okay, if you see value stocks, this is where it is underweighted or this is where it is overweighted. Okay, so you can see how exactly this particular portfolio is, or the particular index is designed. So low, vol low volatility, there's a higher weightage for those stocks over here. Okay, so on and so forth. Okay, now moving to the next part, let's look at some strategies whether we can create some particular screeners on markets mojo. Okay, first we will create this particular value strategy on markets mojo. I'll take you to the expert screener now. Okay, you go to research and you move on to make your own screen now. I think my battery is slightly low, so one of you will have to kind of help me in charging it. Okay, so currently I am on the expert screen over here, if you can just see. And now we will try to apply these particular filters to understand how we can look at value stocks or growth stocks. Okay, so we spoke about the true valuation or valuation dot. Okay, we'll apply the attractive and the very attractive filter. Okay, so I'll simply go to clear all filters currently over here. I'll click on valuation. And I'll select very attractive and attractive. Now you have to understand the power of this valuation dot. It kind of looks at many of the things or many of the drawbacks, which is simply just in a PE ratio or a PB ratio. We look at mature and stable companies for the reason I'll be limiting my research to only the BSE 100 or the top 100 market cap weighted companies currently trading. So I'll go to B, I'll go to index over here. And I'll select BSE 100. Okay, so here you can see there are around 22 stocks, which are attractive, very attractive into BSE 100. And we'll also apply the dividend yield. I won't apply any criteria over here, but this is just to monitor how is the dividend yield of these stocks. Okay, so I'll move on. I'll go to valuation factors and I'll select dividend yield. Okay, let's run the analysis. Now these 22 stocks which are reflecting on your screen are currently attractive and very attractive on Markets Mojo. High dividend yield. We spoke about value strategy having high dividend and they're limited to the top 100 companies. Okay, these are the 22 stocks you can see, like example, Reliance Industries. Okay, let's say UPL, Indalco, ACC, Gale, and so on and so forth. Okay, these stocks could be slightly lesser volatile when it comes to simply investing in a very high growth company, which is expensive. The thing over here, which you have to also focus on is that value stocks are bought at an attractive or cheaper rate. So investors think that they have now, you know, a smaller space to fall down and a higher space to actually go up in the market. So one of the main, you know, assumption the value investor carries is that many it's not come price per year. I've bought it at the bottom. So I don't need to worry right now. It won't fall that much. Okay, that that might not work all the time. Okay. And as I said, the valuation part looks at PE, PB, dividend yield. So I'm not separately putting them in the screener. Some of you might think why is Jason not putting PE or PB ratio, which is kind of available over here, PE, PB or even dividend yield. The reason for that is very simple that the valuation already counts for that. So I don't want to simply double count and you know, we might go to a wrong research over here. Moving on, if you want to look at the growth strategy, how can you invest in growth stocks? Very simple. Let's relook at the filters over here. I'm going to clear all filters. First thing, if you look at valuation companies, which are trading at an expensive or very expensive, a premium range. Okay. The dividend yield should be less than 1%. So I'll go to valuation factors, I'll select dividend yield. The reason I'm not putting zero is that some growth companies might be giving a very small proportion of dividend. Okay, the reason they do that is that they don't want to lose out all investors who simply invest in dividend. It could be possible that a very small, like say 1% or 0.5% of dividend yield. Optional filter, I'm now opening up the index. I'm looking at BSC 500 so that there could be some smaller companies also, not just BSC 100. Some of the smaller counterparts entering this screen. Okay, so I'll go to index. And I'll look at BSC Finder. Okay, sales, growth, profit, two of the important things over here is to understand how fast are these companies growing. 
we spoke about growth in growth in growth stocks so sales growth which is over year in growth factor okay year we'll look at sales growth and profit growth and over year i will avoid selecting one year i will not select this one i will look at the five year average so we get an idea over a trend how these stocks have performed okay i'm simply not looking at one year over year and i'll set it about 20 you could set this at any number but now for now i'll just keep it about 20 over year okay so if you see the total stocks are 18 over year in this particular idea okay so let's now run the particular screener and see how this what are the kind of stocks we're getting so as i see okay the first one i can just see over here is bajaj finance but you can see other stocks as well they are expensive trading at a premium but hardly giving out any dividends but the growth looks very strong and promising okay these companies are running at a very fast rate 20 percent okay cagr in the sales and profit okay so you can see avenue supermarts here and some of these companies okay so they are more tilted towards the growth strategy but what i want to show you today is the one at the between of the matrix remember i showed you a matrix of nine different grids the blend index or the gap growth at reasonable prices Okay, so we're looking at stocks which are attractively valued, but also have a growth potential attached to it. Also provide high dividends, best of both worlds in another one. For this, what we'll do is that we will now go back to the screener and now we will reshuffle some of the indicators. So we spoke about valuation, attractive and very attractive for the value stock, right? So we'll go to valuation. Now we'll select very attractive and we we'll select attractive. Then we have dividend yield, which is greater than 3%. So these companies are also providing dividend. Okay, I'm setting 3% over here. Yeah. Then we look at the growth factor as well. So if you want to ask me, this is the value factor and this is the growth factor over here. Okay, so sales growth, which is five year average, we will go to growth factor, five year average, five year average. Okay, so you can see with 20% growth and 20% sales, we have six stocks. I can you now fiddle with this and get it slightly low. Let's say 15% and 15%. Okay, 13. Now let's run the analysis. So these are some of the stocks with high dividend yields, high growth in profit and sales. Let's see RCF, Kisanet okay, Industries, TN Petro Products. Okay, some of them might be really small companies will be there. National Aluminium, GTPL, Hathaway, so on and so forth. If you see GTPL, Hathaway, for example, 21% growth in sales profit and a 3.57% dividend yield. If you want to see how these companies have performed, simply let's put the return. Let's look at one year return. Let's look at, you know, three month return to get an idea how these GARP stocks are performing. Okay, so this has been the best stock over here, 136% growth in the last one year. And if you grow below, some of the stocks are also fallen by 40% and so. Okay, so here you can also add the return filter over here and actually see how these stocks have performed in the previous period or also in the in, in the period after that. Okay. Now moving on. One index value fund. I spoke about strategies and stocks. What about, you know, a mutual fund? Is there any value mutual fund which you can look at investing in? And we also look at the equity value fund category. And I found out this one particular fund. So I'll go to the mutual fund con over your research, sorry, mutual funds. And over here, we can go to the research part of it. And if I simply search for value, there's a particular index over here. Okay, so now if I go to the top rated index value fund, it's Templeton India Valley Fund. Okay, now this company, uh, this uh, mutual fund has a three year CAGR return of 22.54%. And one thing I look at when I invest in mutual funds, something I look at is consistency. Now what I mean by that, we look at the return performance. Okay, in the last one, two, three, four, five, six half yearly periods, it's outperformed four times. Okay, so this is a comp this is a mutual fund which actually is outperforming four in the last six half yearly periods. Okay, so it's ranked one currently out of the fourteen different mutual funds we have over here. Okay, so if you're actually looking at you know increasing your portfolios allocation into you know let's say value related stocks, let's say you're investing in the market currently and you want to put some of your funds into the value approach, you can simply invest in Templeton India value fund. Okay, so now we've looked at how, what exactly is growth versus value investing? What are the kind of stocks in growth versus value investing approach? 
we also reflected and kind of found out that you know some of us might be tilted towards let's say value investing some of us might be tilted towards growth investing and finally how do we create screeners and invest in this particular strategy okay so without any further ado let's open the floor to the Q&A session you all can ask me anything whether it's regarding to growth versus value or other particular strategies yeah meta the first question is from mr uday what other strategies can we make with growth stocks so what other strategies you can make with growth stocks so let me go back to the growth filter over here so i'm going to go straight to fundamentals and i'm going to go to make your own screener and i think i've saved the in the strategy over here before okay yeah so i've got the filter saved so i don't have to apply it again okay so we're looking at these list of stocks now within the growth list or the growth screen as well you can put some filters over here to dive deep into your particular strategy okay what i mean by that is that you can look at growth stocks but currently moving upwards so you can simply introduce the technical grade filter over here so you're not just looking at stocks which have high growth potential but the market is also currently rewarding them hence they are technically bullish so three stocks over here let's limit to three stocks only okay so these are growth stocks and the market is also realizing and rewarding them look at warren beverages persistent and i think all three are part of our mojo stock list so if you're looking at high growth stocks and the market is kind of having a bullish range okay so persistent systems is a mojo stock last two months and 25 days varun beverages is i think one of our top rated stocks right now so moving up 18 months and 7 days and also apl apollo tubes i recently did a you know very thorough webinar on this particular stock okay so these are growth stocks and are currently moving upwards so this is the different strategies you can make you should not limit yourself to just let's say one particular strategy you can make different strategies you know or twist and turn things over you and then select stocks next question is from mr elias why not look at cft for growth stocks cft for growth stocks i mean uh, so cft is current financial trend which focuses on one particular quarter when we look at the growth strategy we have to look at a trend okay we have to look at an average range we can't just focus on one quarter and say you know what i'm going to look at growth stocks and now or let's say any particular strategy but the cft for one particular quarter it's a very short period sir so we don't have to look at cft for one quarter i really should look at a range of cft okay you have to look at how the cft has improved over a period of time to understand the company is growing at a fast rate so i have not included the cft you know parameter in any of the screeners and it's not kind of actually required the next question is from mr johnson if we go by pe ratio then if e drops because of poor performance the ratio goes up indicating it is a good company how do we resolve this okay so you're saying pe ratio which is nothing but the you know let's say the market divided by the earnings if e drops because of poor performance the ratio goes up you know if the ratio or the pe ratio goes up it does not indicate it's a good company it just indicates that it's currently at an expensive multiple okay and just because the PE ratio goes up doesn't mean you have to rush and buy that company that company's PE ratio is going up because it is currently expensive at that range so e drops because of poor performance you have it does not really indicate if it's a good company now one kind of ratio i like you know instead of looking at PE ratio i like to look at PEG and the reason is for the reason for that is you are actually discounting the growth as well so we have price to earnings ratio and below that we discount the growth okay the earnings growth basically So instead of looking at the PE ratio, look at the PEG ratio, and that would give you a much better perspective of you know how you should look at the company's multiples or you know understand whether the company is growing, and the earnings and the price is moving along with it. The next question is from Mr. Lalwani. Hi, Jason. Good evening. How to find true intrinsic value of any stock? I have one more query. Which are better to invest in value or growth? सर इंटरसिव इंटरसिक वैल्यू का एक्चुअल मतलब क्या होता है यू गेट लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन अबाउट दिस वॉट एक्जैक्टली इज दिस इंटरसिक वैल्यू वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द इंटरसिक वैल्यू इज द थ्रू वैल्यू ऑफ अ स्टॉक वॉट शुड द मार्क वॉट शुड द प्राइस ऑफ दैट स्टॉक बी इफ ऑल द मार्केट पार्टिसिपेंट्स नोस नोज वॉट गोइंग ऑन विद द कंपनी ओके सो यू लेट्स ई नाउ इफ अ पर्टिकुलर स्टॉक इज ट्रेडिंग एट हंड्रेड यू एक्सपेक्ट दैट स्टॉक टू मूव अपर्ड्स और यू नो ट्रेड एट वन फिफ्टी एज ऑफ टूडे बेस्ड ऑन सर्निंग सो आपके लिए वो इंटरसिक वैल्यू वन फिफ्टी रहेगा Whereas if I feel you know what that the stock should actually be trading at eighty, that's my intrinsic value as well. 
So the intrinsic value is the true value of the stock. Okay, what should be the actual price of the stock if the entire market knows about its price movement? There is no one definite answer for that. So when you buy and sell shares in the market, you're buying thinking that the stock's price should be higher. Someone is selling thinking that the stock's price should fall up. Okay, so there's no one particular answer ki intrinsic value kya hai. When you buy a stock, you expect the intrinsic value to be higher than the current market price. When you sell, you expect the intrinsic value to be lower than the current market price. Okay, so there's no straight answer to that, which is a better strategy. If you ask me personally, I am slightly in the between. I believe that you should have some stability and some growth prospects. I am slightly tilted towards the right. Okay, if you ask me, so if there's value core and slightly growth towards the end, I'm more from the middle right corner over there. I don't mind volatility. I don't mind if the kind of stocks, you know, trade at a higher multiple as long as it's growing faster. But the better strategy to invest is a balance of both. You can't just simply skew your portfolio towards a value strategy. Okay, it can be possible that one year the value performs, other year the growth performs. One year the value performs, other year the growth performs. How difficult would it be for you to reshuffle your entire portfolio and say, you know what, this year value should perform, so let me look at value stocks only. Or this year's growth should perform, it's not possible. So there's no particular answer to the second part of it too. The next question is from Mr. Amish. Is there any way to find out in which stocks FII are increasing or decreasing their holdings on daily basis? Presently, we get this information on quarterly basis. Okay, so you asked this question to, I think, Mr. Sunil recently. And I think you also asked this to particularly Mr. Mohit. Uh, I don't think that kind of information is available on a daily basis. I'll have to still check this with the team. And I'll do check back and, you know, get back to you. I'll check this and get back to you. Uh, you can, I think, find out on a quarterly basis. You don't get it on a daily basis, as you mentioned it. Okay, but up honestly, what do you do with this information? Ka? Are you going to actually, you know, monitor that if an FIA has bought it today? Are you going to base your investment decision on that? I don't think that's kind of required, but I'll still speak to the team and, you know, see if we can get this particular data, not on a quarterly, not quarterly or weekly or a, let's say, a, however it follows by. The next question is from Mr. Aditya. What is your view on Shafla? It has made a lot of recovery in last 15 days. Is it expected to go up more? Sure, if I just search the company over here on my... Okay, so I'm just going to the stocks page. Can you see the page over here? Okay, so now let's look at the current... Uh, the current call on this company is hold. Okay, so I'll go straight forward with that. It's dropped from buy to hold, but the current company... Uh, the current score is hold over here. Okay, we can look at the return performance over so in one week it has moved nowhere, but Sensex has fallen down. And in the last one month, it's gone up by 10%. So, so it's showing some resistance here. And if you see the financial trend, there has been a slight drop over here from 1713 from 22 to 1713. Currently it does say hold, sir. There's no kind of, um, you know, exact trend I can see. Only it's moved from mildly bearish from sideways yesterday itself. So it's showing a slight bearish trend. But if it's saying hold, then it might actually, it's, it's the best thing to actually hold this company over here. Okay, so if you're currently invested, hold, so don't actually look at adding more or even downward averaging. I don't suggest that. Yeah. The next question is from Mr. Rahul. Can we invest in US market with mutual funds? If yes, what's the way out? Yes, you can invest, I think, in NASDAQ index funds. So, for example... Okay, so if you just share my screen over here. Okay, so you can see some of the mutual funds over here, which are fund of funds, NASDAQ 100. Okay. I think this is a debt fund. Let me just go over here to... I think these are slightly towards debt. I'll look at some of the, I think, uh, okay, so you can see this is a equity class category, ICICI approved NASDAQ 100 index fund. Okay, only thing is that, see the fund age has just been running since the past one year. So there's not much, you know, uh, so you can see how the companies invested. So you can see Amazon, Tesla, Nvidia, Alphabet, these are how the companies have been investing, Facebook, Microsoft, Coop. Pepsi go so and so forth. So there are some mutual funds. Okay, this one since a long time, but you can consider investing in them. Uh, if you ask me personally, I had recently invested in this particular fund to just get some exposure into the US market. Okay, these are the returns in the past one year. It's not moved anyway, but in the past one month, you can see with the Nasdaq making a slight good comeback, it's moved up by 8%.
yeah so this and if you want to just invest you can go straight forward from your do a one one time or monthly sip so it's quite it's free and it's quite quick the next question is from mr jant hi jason good presentation i had bought bdl when it was value at 300 levels and made 100% profit currently would you consider it growth or value so sure, i'll just go to the bharat dynamics stock to kind of understand how it's so the first thing i see over here is valuation is expensive very expensive so to fall into the growth uh, value strategy it has to actually fall somewhere here but if you see currently it's very expensive okay so i don't think you can simply say say it follows into the value strategy but let's look at the dividend yield is it providing good dividends so less than 1% dividend over here so if you see this particular company is slightly tilted towards the growth strategy it's not tilted towards the value strategy the next question is from mr nirav is tenure of investment affect value strategy or growth strategy what strategy is best for short term and long term so does tenure of investment actually affect so what i have seen is that investors who are slightly tilted towards the growth strategy usually invest in the market for a long term okay let's look at mr swan for example he has invested in companies like paytm and noyo hotels now those companies don't start giving profits or turning around just in a short term okay so the growth strategy kind of investors look at investing in that company and they might hold it for a slightly longer period of time because as that growth company moves over a period or you know turns from being non profitable to profitable that's when you actually realize returns which strategy is the best in the short and long term that's quite difficult to say over here today as we speak okay but as i said if you look at the interest rate scenarios you might get some idea when the interest rates are slightly higher the value strategy is kind of preferred and i don't know if i get more deeper into this because you know, so if you look at a particular stock we look at the price today and the future cash flows you know as it goes forward in the discounted approach okay and if the interest rates are kind of high and there are many future so for example growth growth stocks for example they have a lot of they are value coming in from the future if the interest rates are high they'll be discounted at a higher rate so growth stocks won't be actually performing well there okay so i won't go deep into that but you can't actually say which strategy is the best for short term or long term okay this kind of it's impossible to say uh, in a hindsight you might say you know what if i invested in value strategy it would have done well okay looking at the current mood in the market you might be able to actually place your decision so if the investors are moving on mostly to a risk on strategy then the growth strategy could kind of perform but if people are looking for you know slightly a bit more stable or volatile investments that's when people move on to the value investing stocks and invest more in that The next question is from Mr. Rajiv. Hello, Jason. Suppose I have identified twenty-five to thirty stocks using various strategies and the screener at my disposal. Now, how do I shortlist fifteen stock out of those twenty-five thirty stocks? Thanks. Sure. You should also mention which filters are used so I can help you in shortlisting further. One way is you know it might be slightly a bit cumbersome for you. You can go ahead with the score. If you want to always. you know reach the best stock the score is the best answer but i know we don't display the score on the screener so that might be slightly difficult for you you can dive a bit more deeper there are a lot of other filters you can apply to let's say you know tighten your particular screener okay if you ask me personally some of the filters you can apply to get to a more let's say you know better list of stocks okay you can look at the roc and the roe okay ratios over here uh if you just share my screen if yeah so you can play around a bit with these valuation factors so let's say growth factor as well to kind of understand how you know shortlist a bit more you can look you know tick off companies with slow profit and sales growth we recently also spoke about shareholding you can add these filters as well so let's say you want to have from these 24 stocks you only want to have companies where fi's have invested substantially so on and so forth okay so there are many filters you can apply on the left and the numbers on the right start decreasing but the best one i would suggest to you straight on forward is to simply go with the score The next question is uh, from Mr. Sri Hari. Dear Jason, how about investing in high dividend and high growth, fifty-fifty? Yeah, that's what I said. That's one of the best strategies which I kind of I'm tilted towards. I like to keep my portfolio with a mixture of both. Um, high giving a high dividend and also having a high growth prospects. I mean, you know, that's kind of one of the best stocks to have it. And um, you can actually apply if you just go back towards the video. I also showed how you can invest in a blend blended index. you have the best of both even value 
you know value characteristics and even growth characteristics i think it's a very good strategy so the next question is from ms payal can you please explain what is risk on strategy yeah so risk on strategy is nothing when investors kind of move towards a bit more of volatile companies okay companies which are not that stable in nature okay risk on can also be divided into different asset classes approach so you know when you are on a risk off strategy you might look at you know funds which are a bit more stable in nature let's say debt funds or you might try to hold off your assets in cash and risk on you might also go on and invest in cryptos something which is you know you are now ready to go on the next gear and then look at much more volatile companies cryptocurrencies or look at smaller cap stocks and so on and so forth so nothing is just you are adding a bit more risk in your investment thought process and approach the next question is from dr arun dear jason good evening kindly suggest best sto- growth stocks to invest with regards sure so for example if i just create the growth strategy again just give me a second and uh, then i then we'll dive deeper into see now which growth yeah i've reached to the growth screen over here if you can just see my particular screen so we spoke about growth stocks so we will simply go over here okay so valuation expense actually you know what i don't need to make it i can just simply go and select it because i have created i saved this filter over here so growth stock okay and you remember all these filters over here okay it's the same ones now the best one if you ask me from here i i already added it before i'll try to look at companies which are technically in the growth strategy okay so there can be a good growth stock but if the market is not rewarding it is no use so i look at bullish miley bullish and even sideways so i have eight stocks right now so these are the shortlisted eight stocks i can look at if i want some companies let's say in the mid cap segment i can look at these two stocks but remember these dots are not that good the quality is average okay some of them are mojo stocks of persistent varun beverages and pi or even apl apollo tubes these are our mojo stocks okay if you go to the mojo stocks list also you know what i feel is that we have suggested a lot of stocks which are slightly on the risk on let's say the growth strategy over here some of the stocks we are investing in okay so these would be my personal radar over here they are also ticked off by the investment committee if you're looking at a growth approach these are good stocks something which is a bit more risky is this particular company over here let's dive deep okay so it's very close to the sell and hold criteria it's turned from sell to hold okay so if this company turns out to be buy later on that's when you can look at investing in this particular company okay we also have rhi magnesita over here for example a mid cap company now if you want to look at more risk here you know you want to go dive deeper i'll just tick off this bse finer index so now we have 57 stocks of wider range of growth stocks okay and here you can start off with micro cap for example these are very small companies okay so you can see you can see this particular company over here there are more green dots the quality i think is good so it's a micro cap company score is 71 at buy okay let's look at the return performance oh great it's gone up by 286% in the last one year 52% in the past 6 months 1% up in the, so it's a very i think it's not fallen that much and it's also moving quite fast okay so this is one of the but please remember that this company is a micro cap so it's a bit riskier than your simple large cap index you can see mostly micro cap then some of the small caps let's say silam industries or you know colmatic ace so on and so forth these are some of the stocks you can actually look at investing the next question is from mr nehal shah hi jason ingersoll rand and wpil which one is best for investment and why okay simply i'll just search these particular stocks to get a better idea Because if I go straight with score, if you just share my screen, if I go straight with score, I can see your WPIL at a 90 score. Okay, it's also moved up by 3.4 percent. Small cap company. Ingersoll Rand has recently become a mojo stock, so you can it's a mid cap stock and it's a 77 score. Both of them are in the buy category, sir. One of them is a mojo stock, so it's been ticked off by the investment committee. If you look at the return performance, also it's one year up WPIL at 170 percent. This company is not up that much. I'll be slightly biased if I was in your place I couldn't I wouldn't be able to make up my mind here because both of them look extremely both of them have turned bullish so this company has recently turned bullish on 23rd Feb whereas WPIL has turned bullish on 13th Feb so both of them have recently turned bullish uh, I would still go with the one which is termed as a bullish stock instead of going one which is not ticked off by the investment committee Yeah The next question is from Mr Ashwin 
which are the highest dividend yield stocks yeah simple you can just go to the screener section over your research make your own screener highest dividend yield you don't have to do anything just clear all filters go to valuation factors and tick on dividend yield and now let's run the analysis and simply go to dividend yield and descending corner so you got the stock which has 37% dividend yield but again micro cap stock then we have tv today which has given some 32% dividend vedanta this company is known for giving very hefty dividends in the stunts thing so this is you can just simply find out all the high dividend stocks sir. then you can you know dive deeper and you know um but since you asked me just dividend yield i'll stick to this particular screen the next question is from mr mubashir sir mutual fund scheme hdfc flexi cap fund is growth style or value style so sure, if you just share my screen so i'm on hdfc flexi cap fund now straight off i won't be able to give you an answer so i'm just trying to look at the portfolio and see what kind of stocks they are investing in okay so we have icici bank hdfc bank infosys okay so i can see a mix of both um, growth and value i won't be able to give you the answer straight forward because what i would do in your place if i had some a bit more let's say 10 15 minutes I would look at each of the stocks and see where they fall in the growth and value. I would see how the company is weighted on each of the stocks. So, for let's say, exam ICICI Bank, for example, is falling under the let's say growth approach. Okay, and it's nine percent invested. So, I would say, okay, okay, nine percent of it is allocated to the growth strategy, so on and so forth. One simple way of understanding is that you can see this first two, three, four companies over here. All four have a expensive or very expensive valuation. So, if you see five plus five, ten percent, sixteen, twenty-five percent of this portfolio. Okay, twenty-five percent of this portfolio doesn't have, you know, um, let's say a very attractive, attractive valuation. So I won't say it's tilted straight towards value. It might be a growth. So the next four stocks, you know, then have. Uh, so this is another way to find out. You can look at the second dot over here. So you can see most of the reds. Okay, so it's slightly towards the growth approach. So, okay. Lastly, it also depends on the kind of fund. So this is a G option. So it's a direct growth plan. Whereas the mutual fund kind of reinvests the dividend it gets into this HDFC flexi cap fund, so that the NAV also increases. Okay, so uh, if you have a dividend option here as well, then you can slightly look at a value based approach. So if you ask me, I would say more of tilted towards a growth approach, but I can't come to a straight answer here. The next question is from Mr. Satish. Cochin Minerals does it qualify in the blended strategy? Please advise. So let's search for Cochin Minerals. I'm over here, and uh, okay, so I'm open Cochin Minerals. It's a strong buy company. If you just share my screen, valuation is attractive, very attractive. So that is a good sign. The dividend yield is 0.57 percent. So it's not a pure value stock. Okay, but let's look at the growth. So I can go on quality and look at the sales and profit growth. The sales growth is twenty one percent. Okay, so that is a positive thing for this company. EBIT growth also is over here ninety percent. I can't see the direct earnings growth. I think it's quite a blended stock, so I wouldn't say it's just because it has a uh, uh, attractive valuation. It's also a high growth company. Okay, so it's a very blended approach, and the one year return is one seventy three percent. So that's quite a good stock. It's worked well over here in the last one year period. So slightly tending towards you know blended blended growth approach. The next question is from Mr. Frank. Your advice on Bombay Super Seed? Sure, I'll just search the company over here. Okay, I don't know much about this company. You know what exactly the business does. If you look at the Mojo score of the company, it's currently hold. It's moved from buy to hold, and it's also corrected five percent the lower socket on the last trading session. So there might be some news in the market due to which it has fallen. Okay, since it's at sixty-four hold, you can continue to hold this particular stock. So I don't know much about this particular company, uh, so I won't be able to give you a straight answer. Uh, if I look at the share holding, okay, it has no institutional presence as well, so that could be. So I normally look when I look at smaller companies, I do hope they have some institutional presence in the share holding, but this is not the case for this company. Okay, so the last question for today is from Mr. Ilya uh, Yesu Raj. What do you personally prefer? Which strategy? 
Yeah, I think I've answered this. It's uh, slightly towards a blended approach. I don't look mostly. I used to be a very high growth investor, but currently I'm following a kind of blended approach. I do also enjoy stocks with higher dividends. Uh so yes, I don't have a straight you know, I'm not uh, biased towards one particular of the investment styles. And yeah, mostly of a blended approach. So I think yeah, that's it with the Q&A session. So I liked it a lot of good questions coming up and I kind of also want to thank some of the investors I won't name them who have suggested me to do this topic. I kind of personally found it interesting. If you have any suggestions as to how we can improve the webinar experience, what are the different kind of topics I can come up with, please drop them in the chat box. Uh, on Monday we do have our webinar on the latest edition of Mojo Stocks where we look at the top stocks that have entered the list and on Tuesday we'll have our Q&A. We'll be shortly sending your invites for the next week. Goodbye and have a great weekend. Thank you so much.